you're here. You, you, you did it. You're here. Um, I hope you have a nice cup of something to sip. You can take a nice big oh, relaxing breath. I need one too. Um, and, and then for the next 30 minutes, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is listen and let your mind daydream about a pretty table and your favorite people gathered around it. Okay, so welcome. Welcome everyone. I know that you likely have a lot of things on your plate, pun intended, that's me, yeah. And so I'm grateful you're here right now with me. Um, I see you. I know how hard it is to find the time to host the meals and connect with your favorite people. And the goal of this tutorial is for you to walk away with a framework uh, that you can use over and over and over again. If you don't know me, uh, here's a little introduction. I'm Susie. Hello. <laughs> um, obviously, I love dishes. I was formally educated as an interior designer and I was so fortunate to work with a genius designer on extravagant projects. Um, in 2011, I opened Dirty Dishes. It's a vintage table top rental company. And although setting tables for weddings and for tea parties, it's been so much fun. Uh, I began searching for work that just had a little more meaning. And so Curate Vintage Co., was created to help people that want to host more parties and find the time to connect with their favorite people and feel less stressed when the doorbell rings. So here is my simple recipe for creating a curated tablescape. There are only four steps and as we learn them from the top down, uh, we're setting the table from the bottom up. Starting with the underneath or the backdrop, we will add typical basic items and then create something special using layers and then um, ending with uh, our center features, what, what goes down the center. And that's all cum culminating in a completed tablescape. And so let's just jump right into that. Starting at the very beginning, a very good place to start. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the surface of the table and what will be underneath the dinner plate. Start by thinking about these questions. Is your table a beautiful piece of furniture that you would never want to hide the finish? Or do you need to cover up what life has done to your table? Um, and then what elements set the mood? Like how formal is this occasion? Let's chat about those questions a little more intensely. Um, so here's some of the options. Uh, a white tablecloth. Using a tablecloth depends on the table finish, as we talked about. And it also does lend towards the design. So um, it, it, it lends also to the formality of your gathering. So my tabletop happens to be black. Uh, but sometimes a lighter or brighter background is best uh, for what I want to set on the table. So um, enter the basic white tablecloth. I have a white linen on hand and I am talking about real linen because nothing launders like real linen. I do confess that I also have a white synthetic cloth for occasions when I just don't have the time or the desire mostly, to iron. Um, you don't have to use linen every time, of course. Um, often for traditional, like family holidays, like Easter, Passover, or whatever you celebrate, a formal tablecloth feels extra special. Uh, you remember sitting down to formal tables with white cloths. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the white tablecloth, vintage tablecloths. Oh, gosh. They're a great way, actually, to keep your, your table eco-friendly. And as you're, you, you're, you're reusing beautiful things rather than supporting the manufacturing of more stuff. Um, and they can be found in neutral linen, um, warm autumnal 
palettes, um, bright colors. Uh, as you can imagine, I love my collection of vintage tablecloths. Um, another one of my favorites to keep on the table is a roll of brown craft paper. You'd want to buy your roll. You can buy these big rolls and you'd want to buy it wide enough uh, to cover your table. Um, and it's a great way to add charm to spaghetti dinners or give the table a more neutral backdrop for maybe a desert colored palette. Um, you can also use a platter or a picture frame to trace out brown paper place, placemats or chargers with this paper. Um, and then you can use a white crayon um, or a silver and gold Sharpie that allows you to personalize each, each uh, charger or each place at the table. Um, so that's, that's a bit of fun. Um, if you can do calligraphy, that's even better. Um, when using craft paper, I like to throw some crayons on the table for the kiddos uh, or for the adults. Um, and it's, but for the kids, it's something to do uh, keep them engaged at the table when, you know, the adults are trying to finish visiting. So, uh, yeah, brown paper. Love it. Um, and I also love this next trend. Uh, think about natural materials for chargers, like stone tiles, terracotta tiles, uh, woven hyacinth. You're seeing that. Or palm leaves. You see that. Um, you know, anything that's compostable, like these natural compostable elements. Um, and then one last idea. If you are a thrifter, look for vintage platters. They're, they're cake plates is what they are. They're big round cake plates. And uh, they're the perfect size for, for chargers. Um, so anyway, so now that the dinner plate has a place to sit, <laughs> uh, let's keep building. Okay. Do you remember helping set the table as a kid? So, so this is that basic kindergartner level skill, um, using your flatware, your glassware and a plate, um, use dinner plates from your basic everyday set or your formal collection. Use the, use the formal collection, um, set them out on your chargers, your placemat, your tablecloth, whatever you put underneath, right? And that claims the real estate for each place setting. And then you can build from there. Uh, so I think we're ready for step three. We've got that part. Um, <laughs> and, and this is the layers. Uh, now it's time to get creative. Uh, what detail can you add to the basics to continue to set the mood, basically? <laughs> uh, creatively folded our tied napkin, a place card, a contrasting pattern, um, maybe a little plate with a contrasting pattern, um, a gift or a trinket for your guests, uh, colorful glassware. Uh, you know, God is truly in the details and details are my gig. Uh, so don't worry. I'll walk you through the ideas for this part a little deeper as well. So let's start with napkins. There's so many ways to display napkins. Place them under or between the plates, tie them in a knot or with some twine or fold and place them under flatware for simplicity. Uh, white napkins work almost every single time. So an investment, this is another thing to invest in, um, in some nice white linen is worthwhile. Uh, vintage linen or just uh, just white cloth napkins. Um, and then let's, let's talk about place cards. Uh, in today's Pinterest world, there are templates and ideas galore for place cards. Uh, my current favorite is that I ordered some wood names. They're die cut names out of wood uh, for my family. Um, I ordered them on Etsy and it's something I can use over and over again. Um, photographs of your guests are fun. Uh, write names on food, apples, pumpkins, uh, and, or, or use Scrabble letters. I mean, I, I could really do this part all day. Um, so send me a message. If you need an idea, here's a, here's a pro tip. Um, search escort cards for weddings, escort cards for weddings. Um, and there's some great ideas there that you can move over to your plate, um, for your guest. So look at that. The next thing is patterns. Who patterns? La. Uh, 
<laughs> mixing patterns really lights me up. I'm a maximalist. Anyway, but adding an additional plate style with a complementary pattern or color really ups the game for sure. It ups the game. Um, I, I'll talk a little more on this in a bonus section at the end of this presentation, kind of how to, how to get there um, with these different patterns. Um, add color. Add color to the table, uh, and that that, re that that will freshen it up for any occasion you have. Um, ribbons are an easy way to add color, uh, keep your table feeling fresh um, each new occasion, right? So tie your napkin, tie your silverware, tie your wine stem. Um, I'm especially crazy right now for um, velvet ribbons. Um, you can also add color with glassware. Um, local vintage rental companies like my own often have no minimum and stems range from $1.50 to $3 and they're not expensive. And so it's just a small invest investment for a big impact. So, um, and one more time, let's reuse those pretty things from the past for our, for our planet. Um, then uh, the last, uh, the last thing here is stems and fruit. You can use sprigs of greenery lavender, flowers, pretty fruit, fruit dipped in chocolate, uh, any treat actually to both decorate the place setting and give um, each guest something of their, of their very own, right? Just a little something to say that, you know, that makes them say, oh, for me, right? Um, it doesn't even have to be fancy. You can uh, write your guest names on candy bars even. Um, so are you beginning to feel a little more confident? I hope you are jotting some ideas of your own down as, as you're listening to me. Last, but certainly not least, is all the decor at the center or down the middle of the table. And now that we're at this last step, this last step, I'd like to mention that you can move these steps around a little. If your inspiration is something you found for the center of the table, by all means, design that first and then, then turn your attention to the place settings. There's no rules here, no rules, just general ingredients, right, for a good design. And um, you are the tablescape chef. <laughs> uh, with that said, I have just a few pointers on decorating the center of your table. Uh, starting with this, by now you know that my desire for you is to connect with the people around your table. So we need to see each other to do that, right? So uh, centerpiece 101 is don't block the view of all the shiny, happy, or maybe surly <laughs> faces that you're bringing together. And I want you to stop and think of the centerpiece or, or I want you to stop thinking of the centerpiece as a single object. In fact, um, let's replace centerpiece with center display. So um, you will get a more styled, fun table if you can place several little things, either in a group, like at a round or square table, or along the length of a rectangular table. Um, think, think collections versus one item, or think... Um, it's, it's a little vignette um, that you're putting along the table. Uh, the first thing most of us think of is something organic like florals or greenery. And there's a reason for this. <laughs> they work. They work. Um, if you can, I mean, uh, so many tablescapes just come to life when, when the florals arrive, right? Um, there's a, you, yeah. So if you can order florals from your local florist, I suggest finding an event florist, somebody that's used to doing tables, um, table arrangements. Uh, your planet friendly option when you're looking for a florist is to look for one that actually forages or grows stems locally. Um, but a florist isn't your only option. Wonderful florals come from your local farmer's market or your local supermarket, Trader Joe's fans know this, um, flower arrangement, I, I'm here to tell you that flower arranging is just, it's just not my forte. So I like to keep it simple. I look for delicate greenery or identical stems um, that can be cut short and placed in several small vases, right? Easy. Um, I look for greenery that can be layered and laid on the table as a garland. Just, 
layer it up, lay it on there and you have a, a green garland. And, and don't forget other organics either, like fruits and vegetables, gourds, and seed pods. Um, if you want to make it really easy, <laughs> um, you can uh, purchase one of our curate tablescapes and then we can give you ideas of how to um, add your center display to that um, and maybe even help you order and have something drop shipped to you. So there's, there's that. Um, yeah. So next let's talk about candles. Um, so people that know me know this. I am a person that likes rules trying to give that up. <laughs> but um, when Martha Stewart told me no candles on the table for daytime events, <laughs> I took it to heart, but that's me. You do you. Um, I like to put tables on or candles on the table uh, in multiples, like odd numbers are better than even numbers. Um, so yeah, you, you, candles. Ugh. So uh, tchotchkes. Um, Objet d'art, the the, the pretty little things. If you're a maximalist like me, go for it, go for it. Uh, Your table can be a museum exhibit if you wish. Or if you're more of a minimalist, uh, one or three, yes, I skipped two, interesting objects can be perfectly combined uh, with a simple background. And there. Now you have an outline that you can follow every time you start with an empty table. And uh, if you want to hang in there with me a little longer, next up is a little bonus section on how I get scrappy. Okay, so now here are the bonus tips I promised you. Uh, You will especially love these if one, you're a person that loves a budget and is a little okay cheap (laughs) or two you're a free-spirited creative that relishes making something from nothing or three you're a tree hugger and i don't mean that as a disparaging term uh, but as it was intended someone that wants to use things um, sparingly to help our planet recover from the damage Um, reusing the good and beautiful things we already have or, and please reach out to me to let me know this, if you were all three of these things, like me. <laughs> all right, so it's time to set the table. That means it's time to go on a scavenger hunt at home. By this, I mean look for interesting items from another room or outside. Seriously, it might be something on your nightstand or in your shed, old tools for your handy person's birthday, perhaps. Um, And what about your heirlooms? You know, the ones you have displayed in a cabinet or sitting in a box. Either way, they're collecting dust, right? So saved heirlooms can kick off a design scheme. For instance, my mother's uh, colorful crochet hook collection. She kept buying the same size crochet hook over and over. (laughs) Uh, Or... uh, Arrange those doilies from your grandmother as a runner um, or use her vintage brooches as a napkin accent. Uh, Small things can be displayed in glass hurricane vases or you can dot interesting pieces as you would like, like you would do Easter eggs in a green garland. Just, you know, dot them through. Um, Yeah. So next time, next time you're thrifting, also look for uh, collections of, five to seven things that might be fun. They are low cost and they have one more hurrah before going back to the thrift store after your party. It's kind of a little decor rental hack. Um, And how about your books? How about your books? Not cute like the ones in this this photo? Uh, Remove the dust covers um, and you, you will likely discover a great color palette if you do that. Uh, Books also make great stands to create different elevations in your center display. Uh, And speaking of like elevations, different elevations, um, also look for pretty boxes or objects that when turned upside down make a nice stand or you can wrap ugly things in pretty paper if they are if they're the right size uh, for what you're doing. Uh, repurpose, I like this one, repurpose the greeting cards you have that you've been saving by cutting out the illustrations for place cards and then, um, yeah, 
yeah, they get reused and, and you enjoy the little image again. Uh, look for tea light holders, teacups, ramekins, uh, drinking glasses, small drinking glasses, or other non-flammable, obviously, containers. And finally, uh, before you throw something away, consider if it can sit on your table once before it goes out the door. Uh, I'm not talking about used Q-tips. Oh, that's gross. I'm, I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, you know, just objects that you might be uh, taking to Goodwill or something. Is And it's not really trash picking, right? It's it's not yet in the trash, so. um, but maybe maybe um, you can tear out some pages out of that old book and make a runner. Um, you, 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 just, you would be really surprised what you have on hand when you scan or f for fodder that can it can be repurposed. So um, yeah, scavenge. And then there's borrowing. Um, Borrow. It's you know, it's common for us to borrow serving pieces, uh, like hey, can you bring that big white platter you have over for my charcuterie display? Or do you have a punch bowl? <laughs> you know, but but have you thought to borrow someone else's dinnerware, you know, your your aunt's formal dishes with the silver rim that would be perfect for your New Year's Eve kick? kickback or your best friend's hand-thrown plates would look great with the cacti you're planning for your center display um, or maybe your cousin has those pretty floral plates with her tea set that would be perfect for this sweet girly party you're planning you get the idea and believe me believe me um they will be happy to share them, especially if they're carrying any guilt. This might sound familiar. Any guilt for not using them enough. And as I mentioned before, uh, rental companies for weddings and big events will also rent for smaller parties. And for just a few pieces, it can be really affordable and oh so much better than create, creating waste with paper goods. And I know there's some cute paper goods out there, but uh, oh, let's, let's use... Let's use the good stuff. Um, also, think of decorative things to borrow. Like, I love this idea. Like, you decorate the table with a guest of honor's collection for their birthday or celebration dinner. For example, my husband's model train cars or pieces from my sister-in-law's frog collection or my granddaughter's rock collection. I mean, all of these could be cute, distributed um, at place settings or incorporated in the center displays. You know, honestly, we think to do this usually for funeral celebrations, but how great would it be to appreciate their quirky obsessions while they can still sit at the table with us? And the swap. Okay, the swap. So I think it's a little tragic. I think this is tragic that across the world in each little house sits a full set of China and every one of the pieces is the same pattern. <laughs> so here's my idea. Find a partner who has dinnerware that complements your dinnerware. Maybe you both have white ironstone in different patterns, or maybe they have a solid color and you have a pattern with that color in it, or maybe you both have patterns that are similar and, and really complement each other, then swap this, swap dessert plates and teacups or mugs, whatever they have, whatever the set has. Now you have, yeah, no, what happens is now you both have a set of mismatched, but much more interesting dishes. And so what if they are the same set? Like, so what if they have the same set that you have? You know, fine. Um, this is actually great for family members uh, that can then bring both sets together for like a big holiday dinner. I, I dream of a website. Like, it's like match.com for China patterns. <laughs> but, but in the meantime, send this idea to your friends and explore how two or three of you might create amazing custom tailored sets of dishes. Or, or if you want that beautifully uh, 
curated uh, set of dishes with different patterns. You could skip the trouble and just purchase a tablescape <laughs> that's already already put together um, with coordinated patterns at Curate Vintage Co. Um, and then adding it, adding that to your shopping cart. It's just one click and that'll save you time and trouble, right? <laughs> So that's it. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of the presentation. Um, here's a little reward. Um, this is Henry when he was a kitten. Aww. Look at those tea furs. So cute. Um, <laughs> and then head on over to curatevintageco.com uh, to explore curated tablescapes ready for you to purchase in just one click. And you can find me on social media at Curate Vintage Co. Instagram is my favorite hangout and I'd love a DM letting me know how you liked today's presentation or how you used any of these ideas. Um, and then just, I'm just asking you to remember to connect around your table with your favorites and um, enjoy the rest of your day.